two times our leader uh, could uh, talk them out of it, uh, could convince them that he knows exactly that these are Jews, but they are working, and uh, it's for the sake of the uh, Hungarian state. The third time, just three days before liberation, uh, a man appeared with 32 uh, arrow cross uh, of his bodyguards uh, with submachine guns. They surrounded the entire uh, the premises and they said this time there is no mercy, we are going to be taken down to the Danube. Our uh, leader just asked one thing, they brought him out too, uh, they uh, put a revolver to his head and they said you are going to go with them. He said before we go I just would like you to see what you are destroying here and ask if the leader of the group can come and, and take a look at the situation. Uh, they were gone for about an hour and a half and when they came back uh, he lined us up and said that what I had seen here is beyond my imagination. I never thought that Jews are capable of doing this and I want to thank you for your work and I will be the Minister of Jewish Affairs after the war which is going to be over very soon because the Germans invented the magic weapon and then I, each of you will be then uh, given uh, the same kind of uh, papers and identity as Gentiles in Hungary. You will be honorary Gentiles in the new Hungary. Of course this was, I mean, the most stupid thing we have ever heard in our life, <laughs> but we uh, uh, we didn't, of course, say anything. We didn't object. The fact was, we survived. After this, three days after this, uh, one morning, uh, the first little 18-year-old Soviet soldier in his fur hat put his head through the uh, emergency exit in our basement where the hospital was, and we knew that as far as we were concerned, the war was over. I took my mother's hand and I asked her to let's go back and see what happened to her apartment. We left our belongings there a great deal if there was anything left. 